Hi there, welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. And this podcast, I interview successful business leaders and industry experts to help you grow a business. In this episode, my guest was Brian Beck. Um, he's a managing partner at Enciba. He's a B2B e-commerce expert, helping businesses to sell their product to other businesses using Amazon or, or company-owned platform. He's a, a co-host of a master B2B un- webinar asking the tough question to get the truth. And he's also an author of Billion Dollar B2B e-commerce. You know, if you're already in a B2B business and, and you're already in a, a, a e-commerce, whether it's you're using Amazon platform or you're using your own platform, um, you want to watch this discussion. You know, Brian sh- uh, shared a lot of, uh, you know, challenges that companies deal with when they're trying to scale their business or trying to uh, scale the revenue. Um, is he shared a lot of, um, you know, blind spot. Also, he shared a lot of insight on how to deal with some of those challenges, whether it's a channel ca- a conflict or whether it's a sales team uh, issues or already dealing with the issues on a marketing side. So he shared a lot of insight how to deal with those uh, issues. And if you're a business owner and you haven't gone to uh, you know e-commerce and you want a B2B business, you definitely want to watch this channel and also um, get a copy of his book as well. Um, you know He shared a lot of insight where to start, how to build a business strategy, um, how to scale that up, a business strategy, also you know how to deal with the, you know position your sales team, marketing team, what changes in a business shares a lot of information um, on how to deal with uh, you know when, uh, challenges when you are uh, uh, going to e-commerce. So you know I find uh, Brian to be you know very uh, insightful when it comes to uh, you know um, a business and also he's very good at Amazon strategy as well. You know he's been helping companies for years um, and he has a lot of experience uh, you know before he got into uh, you know helping company on Amazon. So you know you will find him very 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 you know good at in a, in a business side and also on Amazon also in a technology side as well. We had a discussion on a many different variety of technology, including AI, how AI is going to uh, impact you know, e-commerce um, or inventory system in the future. If you like this discussion, don't forget to send me your feedback. And also don't forget to share this discussion with your colleague. Until next time, enjoy and please welcome Brian Beck. Hi guys, welcome to Business Leadership Podcast. Today my guest is somewhere very special, Brian Beck. Uh, Brian, your book, A Billion Dollar B2B Commerce, I enjoyed your book. Um, you know, there's a lot of case studies in it. I think a lot of insights in, in this book. So walk our audience through what inspired you to write this book. Well, first of all, welcome to the podcast. And, and if you can walk us through what, why you, what inspired you to write this book. Yeah, well, thanks for me for having me. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience. Um, well, you know, having 20, gosh, 23, 24 years now of experience in um in e-commerce, I was in the consumer side for many years. Kirbita, I was in the, I was part of the uh, really the the early stages of e-commerce, all the way in the late '90s through the 2000s, and really saw you know a lot and experimented with a lot of things on the B2C retail uh, e-commerce side. I was the vice president of e-commerce at a number of companies, Harbor Freight Tools, Paxson, some others, and we learned a lot, right? And a lot of the things we learned through that consumer journey. What I found in about six to seven years ago, moving into B two B, was there you know B, B, the B two B, in other words, folks selling from one business to another business, was way behind in e commerce, and I saw a huge opportunity to help companies to evolve. And when I would get asked questions, Gurmeet, by folks who were in the industry, you know, a manufacturer, a distributor, you know, what can I read? There wasn't anything to read. Yeah. So there was no sort of playbook. So I, I you know, f- sort of foolishly <laughs> decided to write a book. I, I had published a whole bunch of articles and, and you know, I thought, you know, thought it'd be kind of easy to put it all together into a book. Well, it took me about four years to put the book together and it published in 2020, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And, uh, you know, it's really been an amazing journey since then. Um, you know, the book's been a kind of a, a playbook for a lot of companies now. It's a 400 page, 12 chapter playbook on how to do e-commerce for B2B companies. So that's why mm-hmm. I decided to write it, you know, give folks a playbook to uh, in the industry. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, insights in the book. There's a lot of experience, you know, you can see in a book and a lot of a lot of research as well. You have a lot of case studies we documented as well. Yeah. So so let's start with the COVID. So before COVID, definitely people who wanted to go to uh, digital, or they wanted to go to e- e-commerce, they probably have, a, you know, have a little bit, uh, you know, they, they were trying, they were working on their own pace, but did did COVID speed it up that that process for a lot of businesses? So, so they had no choice? Well, you know, the answer is yes. It didn't, I say COVID didn't necessarily change what was happening. It just accelerated what was already happening. And, you know, for many years in B2B, one of the big differences from consumer is that in the, a lot of B2B companies, you know, the business has been, you know, has been just good enough, right? Over the years, it's it's been growing at a modest pace. 
Uh, you know, a lot of companies have relied on traditional channels, uh, sales teams, call centers, branches, distribution and dealers and other traditional selling channels for many, many years. And that business has been just good enough, meaning that, you know, I make this point in the book, meaning that there hasn't been enough urgency to change. Right yeah. now, COVID did impact that. Right. So a lot of businesses, particularly in 20 and 2020, 2021, a lot of businesses realized that they, you know, they needed to have uh, an e-commerce channel. So mm -hmm. we saw an enormous influx into places like Amazon and Amazon Business, uh, people selecting platforms, trying to deploy an e-commerce platform. So, you know, we have seen acceleration. Now, I will say the industry is still behind, uh, you know, where, where consumer is, right? So we still have a lot of, in particular, product manufacturers, Gourmet, that don't have e-commerce yet. And, you know, that's that's still, a, you know, a kind of a, 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 an indication of the industry is very still very conservative. Uh, they're very thoughtful about how they make decisions. I argue too thoughtful. Yeah. Let's see the business case, everything to death. Right. Yeah. And that, in cases where it doesn't have to be done. Um, so at any rate. Uh, but yes, I mean, to answer your question, COVID certainly accelerated digital uh, amongst uh, our, our community of B2B companies for sure. So, so let's talk about channels. I, I know Amazon spent a lot of resources over the last few years. Is there still a debate that, you know, how, what channel to pick from? Or, or is it yeah, Amazon's de facto that, listen, you just can't do what they're delivering and we just just so simply just go with it. This, this is a proven fact. Uh, it's a huge topic. You know, one of the, so I, I, I'm involved with thought leadership. I, I run a company also called Inceba Gurmeet, where we run yeah. Amazon programs for B2B companies, uh, principally manufacturers. Amazon is, I mean, it's a huge factor in the market, right? And so we think about, you know, there's, there's multiple approaches to Amazon. But the fact of the matter is, I like to say, you know, I quote Jim Collins all the time. I don't know if you ever read his book, Good yeah. Degree. Yeah, but, good um, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, right. So one of the things he talks about is confronting the brutal reality of the situation that is in the marketplace and the companies that exceed their peers in terms of, you know, uh, market capitalization and overall success and value. Um, you know, confront the reality of what's going on in the market. And the fact of the matter is that Amazon is a huge, um, you know, player in e-commerce, in the marketplace. And I'm not just talking about consumer. I don't know if you saw Andy Jassy's letter to shareholders two weeks ago, Gurmeet, but, you know, he's talking about for the first time, Amazon business in that shareholder letter, letter and having exceeded $35 billion in B2B volume through Amazon business in 2022. This is huge. These are huge numbers. Look, Amazon, mm -hmm. Amazon is a distributor in B2B market categories. It plays, I argue, a slightly different role than, than traditional distribution does in many, many instances. But look, folks, let's be, you know, look at, I mean, you got to understand that Amazon business is three times the size of Granger. I mean, Granger is like the, you know, it's the, whole, the, the, yeah. the big one, right? That everyone thinks about in industrial and MRO channels. I mean, they're huge in B2B channels. And it's not just, it's not just, you know, office supplies. It's a lot of other types of products that are moving through that channel. So you have to have a strategy for Amazon, whether you're a manufacturer or distributor, you need a strategy and that could include selling. It might include differentiating from or both, right, uh, Amazon. But but it is a good place to start for many companies in e-commerce if they don't have it already. Well, where we are uh, in Ontario, uh, Brian, is, you know, um, there's no, um, one of the complaint business leaders have that there's no warehouse space because Amazon's taken over all the warehouses, right? <laughs> um, so they have built huge warehouses. I mean, yeah. you can't, the space they occupy and uh, logistically and in a resource are put into this warehouse, you just can't simply compete with that or or not able, you know, have an option not to look into it, right? So, because uh, they, they have the, the resources they have and the space they have and all, all that, you know, um, uh, logistics they have behind the whole, whole, you know, you just, I don't think, you know, you, anybody can compete or, or, or even look, you know, consider that as an, a second option. Well, I mean, you think about, so Amazon, you're right. I mean, I think about Amazon as um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's a technology company, meaning that they've done a great job with eliminating friction in digital transactions, but they're also a fulfillment company to your point, right? And so Amazon has set the standard for what it means to get small quantities in a very rapid way. They, you know, they, they built trust in Amazon Prime, the most successful, you know, program for loyalty in history, really 200 million members. It's incredible. Um, 
they built that trust largely based on fulfillment to your point, right? So you're going to order your, your product and you're going to get that product often within a day, right? Or even the same yeah. in many yeah. cases, if you're in a major Metro speed to delivery. Yeah. That's right. And, 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 you know, that competency, when you think about B2B channels, think about distribution, think about a, a you know, a Granger or a Cardinal health or an MSC or motion industries or fast and all, whatever, you know, distribution historically, or in automotive, right, or in HVAC, distribution's job in, the, in history, traditionally, part of it has been getting the product to the customer really quickly. Think about your auto repair place, yeah. right? You yeah. know, the, the auto repair place orders apart from their local distributor, and it's and it's dropped to their place the same day. Well, Amazon has that capability now for e-commerce, and yeah. that's that's a serious competitive advantage Amazon has. But it can also be leveraged by you know, by these companies, by in particular by manufacturers to fill a need in the market. And in some cases, the distributor isn't filling, right? Yeah. So to compete, you know, it's both competition and understanding that's the expectation of the buyer. But it's, then it's also about, um, you know, potentially leveraging that for your business. And it depends on the kind of business you are. I mean, get into that if you want to. It's a yeah, yeah. topic. So, so before we get there, so, so what are the, some of the hesitation for business leaders not getting into that? Uh, you know, that's, is it, is it a profit margin that they lose more on an Amazon or, or, or is it a financial or is it simply logistic or is it a mindset? What are the, some of the challenges that, that, that re, why business leaders are looking into as, as a first option? Oh boy. There's really, there's really two words that captured. I think most, most of it, you me. One is, well, one, they both, uh, channel conflict, right? Okay. <laughs> two words. If you're a manufacturer, you're hesitant to get into e-commerce, not e-commerce, well, e-commerce too, yes, but Amazon in particular, because you're worried about channel conflict. Channel conflict comes from, you know, basically the, uh, the you know, the, 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 a channel, another channel on Amazon or the manufacturer competing for the same buyer's dollar that the distributor, dealer, retailer, whoever already has, right? So it's about that. And, and at the heart of it, it's a lot about pricing too, right? So if you're a manufacturer, and you're going to sell on Amazon, or you're going to sell directly even through e-commerce. You have more margin to work with, right? You, you remember, you know, the, the old world was, you know, manufacturers sold to distribution, distribution sold to the or retail sold to the yeah. end, right? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You know, you're you're kind of hopping over that if you're a manufacturer selling direct to the end buyer, and you've mm -hmm. got all the retail margin that the distributor or retailer could take. So, hey, oh my gosh, you know, you got all this all this um, opportunity. That scares the crap out of, well, both sides, manufacturers and distributors, because the manufacturer will say, well, I don't want to disintermediate my, my distribution, my dealer, my retailer. Uh, I, I respect that relationship. It's been it's a lot of my revenues running through that. And so what's interesting, though, is when a company doesn't manage Amazon in particular, Amazon will manage that company, meaning that it's the Wild West. You're going to have sellers on Amazon that people don't know. You're going to have, uh, you know, that the manufacturer doesn't know. Those sellers often will just drop the price. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about channel conflict in this in this dynamic is that a manufacturer, if they have a proactive Amazon program, they can actually control that. They can actually manage the, the whole channel and the pricing and everything else. And it actually reduces channel conflict when they do that. But her, if, I, if I'm looking at what, you know, what, what the... The, the main issue is related to why companies don't go into Amazon, particularly manufacturers. It's because of that concern about channel conflict. Now, there's other things too, mm. like fulfillment and you know finance and profitability that they have to think about and all these other things. Yes, but th that's the primary reason. And if I'm a distributor, I'm worried about enabling a competitor, right? Because Amazon potentially is uh, well is a competitor in many many places. And why would I do? Why would I compete? Well, there's reasons and business cases why a distributor might want to sell on Amazon too. And we can get into that, but at the end of the day, channel conflict is really at the core of a lot of the hesitancy uh, businesses in B2B have for e-commerce in general and specifically for Amazon. Does that make sense? De de definitely. But, but, you know, to your point that if you manage it properly, you could definitely, you know, get, get both of the channel coexist, right? So with, uh, you can yeah. lower the conflict. Wouldn't that double up the volume for for a manufacturer, whoever's manufacturing? Like you know, now you have a, not only a distributor, you got Amazon as well, and you can manage it properly and avoid the conflict. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, we see it every day in in our business at Enciba, where you know we're we're seeing incremental revenue. Now, the question is always from the manufacturers: Well, is this revenue really incremental? I'm getting from Amazon, right? In mm -hmm. some cases, it is. In some cases, it isn't. It's a tough question, right? Because hey, am I taking money out of 
you know, the distributor's pocket or out of this other place and putting it over here in Amazon. Well, let me give you a statistic. 65% of Amazon buyers will buy products from companies they've never heard of, from brands they don't know. And guess what? You go do, a, I love doing this, your meet with, with, yeah. companies, with CEOs. Like, hey, let's go look at your product category at Amazon. And let's do a search, right? Let's search on, I don't know, whatever, abrasive, you know, yeah. uh, standards or something, right? Or, or you know, whatever. It could be a consumer product, you know, whatever. Um, let's do a search for that. And then let's, then let's take a look at who shows up. And then let's look at how much volume those companies are doing, right? Once we look at how much volume those companies are doing, it's incredible because some of them are doing tens of millions of dollars on one product. And they're companies, they're brands that the manufacturer has never heard of. Because, because wow. coming out of other markets, they're taking share that's not even from the, the from the distribution channel. It's not they're not taking share on their products from retailers and distributors. It's different brands and different products that the that the distributor and the menu and the, and the retailer don't even sell. So at the end of the day, it, it is incremental. You're taking share back from folks from new new entrants to the market, and a lot of these folks are coming out of Asia, and they're they're doing an awesome job on Amazon. They're killing it. They do a great job with with content and search and everything else and they're taking share and the manufacturers and the brands don't even know it they don't even know they're losing share so it's yes incremental yes and it, it plays a different role in most cases than your than your distributor does or your dealer does because there's not a lot of consultation necessary in buying through amazon it's it's, it's a different part of the customer journey and we see it every day and so the chat that also <clears throat> eliminates some of the channel conflict concerns and reasons why they're not selling so yes you can increase the size of the pie by being in amazon absolutely yeah. so what makes that successful is that a customer experience that amazon provide uh, brian or is it, is it a strategy that people use on amazon you know how they want to coexist so what is that some of the element that make you know company a very successful at amazon and with the distributor or company b that they try both and listen uh, you know those channels didn't work so we're going to scale back but only go to distributors so what are some of the fail failures are well i mean certainly failures if you you know so 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 <laughs> unfortunately but there's you know in the market too often we see companies going to mark going through amazon um and and not doing the necessary things and this is true of e-commerce as well in general not doing the necessary things that they need to make this digital channel really sing, really, you know, be a digital representation of, you know, what your what a, what a sales a physical sales uh, floor might do or a salesperson might do. Now it plays a different role again, but you know, you've got to have good, you've got to have good images, uh, you've got to have really good descriptions of the product, technical information about the product. You need to make sure you're using things like video and making sure your product in, in the case of Amazon is prime eligible. There's so many places that, that, that a company can go wrong because often, you know, B2B companies are based on physical selling relationships mm. uh, and, and this is a brave new world, right? So, so, you know, companies fail and that they don't make the right investments in the channel overall. Um, they also don't often recognize what, what these digital channels, what Amazon really is about. Yep. And it's about a different, it's about a different part of the customer journey. And what Amazon has done so well is eliminate the friction in buying value e-commerce. Think about it, Gurmeet, are you are you a Prime member? Are you an Amazon Prime yeah. member? Oh, yeah. Great. So mm -hmm. you want something, right? I'm going on my Amazon app and I'm like, I'm sorting by the Prime, you know, the the the, the prime eligible items, and I have something ordered within five seconds because I know what I want, like you. Yeah. You're, you're searching, it's a search engine. You find what you want really quickly and you, you just get it out of the way. And that's the, the one of the key things I say in my book, or me is is talking about eliminating friction in the buying cycle when the customer knows exactly what they want. Your job as an e-commerce. Uh, channel is to make it really easy, and Amazon does that better than anybody. One so, click to buy, one exactly, click to complete the purchase. Done. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Can it be better than that? Is one click to buy? <laughs> exactly. So you know, optimizing for that search engine, uh, and and that's you know, so eliminating friction. You asked what Amazon does well. They do that really, really well, and then they get you the product before you even expect it, and you're satisfied, and then you trust the channel. And so, and then more people, you know, you, that's why you're getting these brands selling products on Amazon that no one ever heard of because the buyer trusts the channel. They don't care about the brand as much as the channel. As long as it looks like a good product and it's got good customer reviews, they buy it, right? Even if they never heard of the brand. Does that make sense?
Got you. So, so let's talk about the margins on that. Uh, Brian, does um, Amazon uh, you lose a little bit of margin if you if you go in with your own you know with your own distribution channel, right? So, um, what I'm trying to understand is, do company who use Amazon is is that a stepping stone that you know early on I don't have a logistic, I don't have I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use Amazon for everything because that's my back engine. I'm gonna put my products there. But later on, in a longer terms, I'm going to start bringing those services in-house. I uh, know I've got a bigger in a company, so I can keep my margin as well, and also I can distribute. Is that one of the strategies people use or Amazon for long-term strategy for businesses that, listen, I, you need to stay with it if you, if you don't. There's, it doesn't make sense for you to even try to bring this, this, uh, the services in-house. I'll tell you a story, you're being about a, one of our clients that I think will okay. bring this to light. So I think, you know, number one, um, we argue that Amazon is a, is a good place to start in the e-commerce journey for companies that haven't had much e-commerce, had any e-commerce, particularly manufacturers, because you're building the, you know, you're building the product data, you're building the marketing muscle to understand the e-commerce channel in an environment that is, that is uh, less, you can still make a lot of mistakes, but there's, there's less components than versus launching your own e-commerce. So, yeah. so to your point, yes. And I'll tell you a quick story. We have a client that makes lawnmowers. They're called grasshopper lawnmowers. They're based yeah. in Kansas, um, where there's a lot of grass. <laughs> anyway, they they make these what they call zero turn lawnmowers. You ever seen yeah. these things right on them? Yeah. Like, like 35 miles an hour, and they, so the, the White House uses them to cut their lawn, right, and things yeah. like that. Um, so there's you know they're all over the country and the world. They have distribution channels. They have dealers in all these markets around the world. Um, you know, big big presence in the U.S. and North America. Well, yeah. you know. Four years ago, they came to us and said, you know, hey, you know, we're thinking about e-commerce. And we said, well, let's look at, you know, let's look at Amazon as a starting point. And we did. We launched Amazon, I guess, two, two and a half years ago. Um, and we helped them build a viable Amazon channel. This is a family-owned business. We're dealing with the third generation of the family. Yeah. You probably had the situation in your own business, right? Family-owned businesses tend to be conservative. A lot of them. Yep. Yeah. And and it's like, hey, you know, uh, the, you know, the, the current, you know, ownership hasn't have any real experience with e-commerce. Maybe they buy through Amazon for their personal lives, but for B2B, uh, it's different. That's for the, that doesn't apply to our business. Well, world. <laughs> it, right. But in their case of Grasshopper, what they found through Amazon, they launched an Amazon program. We helped them grow it to a sizable channel and, you know, for their parts, their accessories, all the lawnmower stuff that goes on these mowers. And they said, well, wait a minute, this actually does work. <laughs> we can't actually do e-commerce for our business yeah. and people actually do want to buy this stuff via e-commerce. Well, guess what? You know, a year, year and a half ago, they selected an e-commerce platform. They're about to go live with their own e-commerce, B2B, selling to dealers, selling to end users in the field, you know, using their products. Their products last 20 years. These are awesome products, top of the line for what they do. And so they, you know, they have this whole need that their customer has to transact with them. And, and the e-commerce is, is not just, you know, it's not just Amazon. Now it's going to be B2B e-commerce themselves. And they're selling to their dealer base and they're going to be selling to the end users of the product. And, and yeah. so they have said, look, this is the way that our customer wants to interact with us at every point in the value chain. We're going to now enable it. But to your point, yeah, Amazon, they started with Amazon. They got the data ready on Amazon. They're doing marketing on Amazon. They're doing merchandising on Amazon. And they're taking that knowledge and those assets they built. And they're now bringing it into their own e-commerce uh, from, from, from the Amazon world. And they're going to keep Amazon, of course, but it's, you know, it's a it's a multi prong you know approach, and two it's options. Just... You got two options. You can go either way, right? So absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing, if if I'm a business owner, um, and and I'm trying to think, you know, let's not, you know, I got a product or I got a service, I can go uh, uh Amazon, I can start selling it. Looks like you know I, I need a definitely strategy. You know what I'm gonna do, but but also what I'm hearing from you is you you gotta take a look at a sales, and you mentioned that in your book as well. Um, you gotta run your sales differently. You gotta run your marketing differently. So it looks like it's a lot more undertaking that simply just going to Amazon or setting up a store. You gotta you gotta look at your the way you are selling to you know going outside your sales staff is working, how your marketing staff is working. You gotta change that as well a little bit. Or coexist what you know what do you need for Amazon and what do you need for your own company? I take it. You do. Uh, it's a great point. I mean, I have a whole chapter, well, several chapters, but I have a whole chapter in the book on on sales uh, alignment. So you know, you take a B two B company that's been selling through a sales force and a call center and perhaps you know through branches or what have you for a hundred years, right? Yeah. And 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 how do you now understand how digital? impacts that entire journey. Now, there's some really great data. 
you're meeting from places like Gardner, for example, and, and McKinsey, to talk about the emergence of these hybrid sales reps. And the stat uh, from McKinsey is that 85% of companies in B2B expect within just a few years to have what they call hybrid sales representatives. And these are folks that are enabled and embracing e-commerce and digital channels and empowered by these channels um, and, and not fighting against it. So there's a tendency in these companies um, historically, and if I'm in the sales team, I'm, I'm, I'm worried too, right? Uh, I, is, is e-commerce going to take my job? And I have a whole <laughs> chapter that talks about this. It's not the death of a salesperson. For e-commerce, it levels up the sales folks, meaning that if all you're doing as a salesperson is just Hey, yep, yeah, okay, we can take that order for you, click, and that's it. If you're just an order taker, yeah, your job's at risk. If you are, though, a consultative, truly value-added salesperson in the, in the B2B sales funnel, e-commerce, Amazon, these things enable you to do your job better. Why? Because, and I make this point in the book, it takes all the, the low-level transactions off of your plate. Exactly. I don't, to, I don't have to answer a question about where is my order. Go online and get it. I, <laughs> I know exactly what I want. I go to I go on my e-commerce or Amazon or wherever and get it. And guess what the smart companies are doing? They are commissioning their salespeople and say, I'm a salesperson. I'm getting commission on those orders going through e-commerce. I'm getting commission on those orders going through, even through Amazon, believe it or not. And at the end of the day, I love it because I don't have to do as much work and I'm encouraging more customers to move to e-commerce, I'm encouraging my named accounts, if I'm a salesperson, to go use e-commerce and I'm making more money, I'm making more commission, I'm saving time, I got more time for my wife and kids. You know, it's we all win, but I have to be adding value and I have more time to spend, you know, in consultative and strategic selling, winning new accounts, you know, things like that and, and it's it's really a great up leveler if this is all done right. And uh, yeah, so I have a whole chapter about this in the book. It's yeah, you're not doing any administration work, right? You you just right. pass it on all that administration to consumer. Hey, listen, you do your administration. You put your credit card in. I, I don't need to worry about you know what your credit card number is. If I got it wrong, I got to call you back. You know, I'll just focus on that delivering value for you, and you close all the tra you know transaction. What I need to do exactly. Yes, it's it's pushing the low value tasks or the tasks that a customer expects to self service on out to that customer, so that you're not handling them as a sales rep. It's it's a real win, and then when you when you when you put that together with the data that's captured in the through the web, meaning oh I'm I, you know meaning that like for example my CRM system my customer relationship management system that I use as a salesperson is now informed by the things that happen uh, in e-commerce. So you know the beauty of B two B is that it's a closed loop. You know you might have a company the size of you know a big distributor, a multi billion dollar distributor might have 30,000 customers versus mm -hmm. consumer where that same size company will have 5 million consumers. B2B is a known is a known world of customers. So in in B2B e-commerce, if I'm buying from a supplier, I'm logging into their site. I then as as the supplier hosting that site can see what I'm doing as a buyer. I'm downloading things, I'm downloading, I'm looking at things, I'm adding things to my cart. Well, then that information, if it's integrated to the CRM, can be passed to the CRM. And then the CRM tells the sales rep, hey, your customer looked at this stuff, added this stuff to the, to the cart, is interested in these things, searched for this. You know, hey, next time you go to see him or next time you call him. Mention about it. Talk about exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> and it's amazing. I mean, it just makes it so, the conversations more relevant. Look, at the end of the day, nobody has any time anymore, right? So, uh, yeah. So it's. It's about being very, very relevant, particularly in these days when there's no everybody's you know working still working remotely. A lot of people are. I am. Everybody does. <laughs> Seems. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you get that insights back into your CRM that you know customers you know experience what they bought it and also what they looked at it. I mean, yeah. you, you do that insight. I mean, there's nothing else salespeople need more than you know what's given to you. Now you can just go talk about it. Hey, you were interested in this product. Could we talk about it? And and you close the close the deals again. Well, and, and 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 frankly, the you know the sales team may not may not know that the customer is interested in some of these things. So you know, imagine yeah. that a logged in customer adds something to their cart or downloads something or you know uh, looks at a few different pages or searches for something. Create an activity in the CRM system. Alert that salesperson that customer did that. Wow, yeah. now I know, and I didn't. I had no idea they sell syrup. They were, I didn't know they were looking for those you know, those angle grinders uh, or whatever. Yeah. 
you know, <laughs> now I know. Oh, I, so I know to, I know to create a, you know, to follow up with that customer on that. So it's, it can be really, really powerful. Right. How does it change for marketing people, marketing teams? You know, um, I know they, you know, in the past we advertise on a website, we, we you know, brochure, we send out emails. How does that, this Amazon, you know, having that, that Amazon, uh, you know, presence changes for marketing teams? Well, you know, what a lot of folks um, don't realize it, is that Amazon is now the number one, by far the number one product search engine in North America. Now, increasingly internationally as well, but in the U.S. in particular, Amazon gets close to 70% of product search. I'll say it again, 70% of product wow. search. So you think about, I mean, my world growing up in B2C e-commerce, retail e-commerce, it was all Google, right? I mean, from the you know, you know early 2000s up until you know, I left the operating side you know, five, six years ago, Google was king, right? We always were optimizing for Google SEO, for paid search on Google. Now, Google's still extraordinarily relevant in everything and still relevant in product search. But Google's share of product search has gone down dramatically, mainly at the hand of Amazon. So if you think about what you know, how has how has advertising and marketing evolved for B two C and B two B companies? Well, guess what? Uh, Amazon, and this is reflected in their numbers. Amazon is now one of the major advertising venues for um, you know for companies that want to stay relevant to their customer. What do you need to do to advertise in Amazon? You have to have an Amazon presence and a controlled one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you ain't there, guess yeah. what? That volume's going to somebody else. So, and this is all, you know, this is shot through the roof in the last five or six years. And a lot of particularly B2B companies, they don't know it. They don't realize it until they go and they do what I said before. They go online, and they search for their product, you know, they search for that angle grinder or grinder or sander or whatever. And they yeah. find that, oh my gosh, who are these companies that are showing up at the top of search results? And I don't even know the brand name and look at how much <laughs> revenue they're doing. It's insane. So, yeah. you know, yes, Amazon is a huge game, ch game changer in the world of marketing to stay relevant to your customer. No question. Wow. Very interesting. So if I'm a, I'm a biz, uh, business owner, I, a lot of, you know, uh, audience listening, they, they all in a business, they, they're running manufacturing or they're, they're services business, whatever they are, what product business. So where do they start if they want to start this journey, uh, Brian? You know, so what are some of the first couple of steps they need to take if they if they start considering that? Listen, I need to have Amazon presence, or or simply the digital presence beside you know the, my de typical delivery channel. So what where do they start this journey? You know, it's a great question. Um, two years ago, maybe three years ago, a company called Digital Commerce Three Hundred and Sixty, which follows this space, they're a media company. And they do research and such. And they they said they did a survey, Gurmeet, that said, you know, what are the mm -hmm. reasons you're not in digital commerce if you know if you aren't? What's prevented you? The top two reasons, right? Number yeah. one was lack of leadership buy-in. Number two was lack of budget. Guess what lack of budget comes from? Number one, lack leadership. of leadership. <laughs> Right. It's not <laughs> lack of technology. It's not lack of best practices. I mean, none of that stuff was mentioned. I mean, it because it's it's all there. Best practices are there. Look, B2B doesn't have an excuse. We had an excuse back in the day with B2C because yeah. we this was it was all new e-commerce. Yeah. No one knew what it was. But you know, and we was evolving, we're learning and testing and failing, succeeding in some places. B2B, it is about leadership. So yes, where does it start? It starts with leadership. If you're if you're a digital hero, right? If you're somebody who's who's trying to create change at your business, you're charged with bringing e-commerce, Amazon, whatever into your business. If your CEO and board is not saying and not not just saying, but actually acting on doing things, including giving budget to the e-commerce channel, if they're not doing that, I mean, I'm sorry, find another job because they, they, I actually tell people that sometimes and they say they could call me and they're frustrated. I talk to five or six practitioners every day for me. And, they, and, I, and if they say to me, I, you know, hey, you know, my my board is not or my, you know, may, they might they may even have a C-level or VP level title, these people. But if they're not getting the investment dollars, if they're not getting the backing, the true action based backing of leadership, the rest of their team. I, I have, sometimes I have to tell them, guy, you know, listen, you should really find somewhere else because that is the number one reason. So where do you start? It starts there. You have to make sure your leadership is aligned. 
once you're there, then it's then it is then it becomes more of an issue of following best practices. I mean, you have to have things like data, right? Data is a big one. You yeah. got to have your data ready. You know, you got to make sure your product information is, is sound. Don't underinvest in that. If you're going to go to e-commerce, obviously you need a platform, your direct platform. This is why a lot of folks start with Amazon. It's because the platform is already there and the traffic's already there. Um, you need resources. You need people. Right? You need people to run this stuff or hire a company like us to run your Amazon program, what have you. But you need to have the resources as well. So there's a kind of a laundry list of things. Once you have that top piece up set, yeah. there's a laundry list of things where you need to start after that. And that's the beauty of it is that's pretty well established at this point. I mean, you need, to, mm -hmm. you need companies to build your site for you, design it, things like that, systems integrators, all the resourcing there. But there's there's a clear path once you're um, once once you've got that alignment. That and you've got to uh, manage your inventory a little different as well, right? So, so the last yeah. piece is definitely you, you, you know now you have a different you know uh, delivery system. You you need to manage that that inventory for for Amazon. Oh, it's huge. I mean, the, the fulfillment. So this is this is a big step, right? I mean, we think of, amidst those best practices I described, fulfillment is key, and inventory management is key. You have to have the ability to. Uh, to manage your product in an e-commerce setting and the inventory in an e-commerce setting, whether that's your own e-commerce or through Amazon. Mm -hmm. So many of our clients, for example, are using Amazon's fulfilled by Amazon service, which is essentially a consignment inventory where you're putting product into Amazon and on a consignment basis And Amazon, when they sell it, they ship it from their inventory that they're holding for you. So in those cases, um, you, you still have to, while Amazon's still handling the last mile in mm -hmm. that case, you still have to you still have to do forecasting. You have to make sure you have enough product in Amazon. You have to, so yes, there's a there. That's one of those sort of legs of the stool: I mean, operational legs, marketing, product data, technology. There's different legs of the stool that you need to you need to follow. But again, the beauty is the tools are there, the techniques, the best practices are all there, and, and they can be employed by by businesses. So again, it's more about that getting that yeah. top level support. And it's proves a proven uh, framework, right? It's it's not that you, you know there's going to be a lot of adders, or they already figure out all the adders. They are already been tweaking for years, right? It, yes. It's not going to be adder. It's proven method. You know, just just run with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it is. I mean, you got to get experience by your side. You need to hire or you know bring in a consultant or whatever. But you need you need to have the experience that knows the best practices and knows the tech to select and knows the inventory models to use and things like that. But at the end of the day, yeah, I mean it's. There, we proved it in B two C e commerce 15, 20 years ago. All those mm -hmm. best practices. B two B is different in some ways, but it has a lot of commonality. And so, the best practices, guys, are there. Yeah, um, I know it's a, it's a hot topic in the market at the moment. But I, what are your thoughts on AI? Is it going to change some of the stuff we just talked about? It. What is the impact you see? I know there's a lot of uh, we learning AI as we go through it. You know, we we all going through the same time. So, any impact you see uh, on this business from from AI? Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story, Gurmeet. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's. I mean, my gosh, yes. Um, we're using AI in our business, right? With some for some things, I'll I'll describe them in a minute. Um, but you know, I was talking to the CMO of a very large distributor. A month, two months, about a month ago, when the you know Chat GPT, you know, had come out and you know, all this, he said, you know, I was doing a, <laughs> I had to whip up a contract really quickly, right? Yeah, I had to go and figure out, and you know, I've got a legal team and everything else, but I, I needed to do this one-off kind of contract, and I went to Chat GPT and I said, hey, Chat GPT, you know, give me a contract. <laughs> it wrote the contract. He looked at it. This looks pretty good. He sent it off to a to his business partner. The other company, and the company's like, "Wow, this is one of the best contracts we've ever seen." <laughs> <laughs> so, so, because it was thorough, and you know, so AI today and um, the way we're using it, uh, it has enormous implications, right? The way we're using it is as a starting point. So, we're, when when we do Amazon content, for example, there's subtlety to merchandising, there's subtlety to things at marketing, etc. But but AI can really accelerate some elements of a starting point, whether that's a contract, whether that's a, an Amazon listing, whether that's a blog article, whatever it is, marketers, I think, attorneys, folks who generate content for a living need to confront the reality of what AI is and how to embrace it and use it uh, because it it does have, you know, in, I'm talking about sort of one specific use case, 
but it has implications as to your efficiency. Um, it has implications potentially as, you know, as to your uh, r- risk to your job, if mm-hmm. you're not, you know, sort of, but, but we don't see it yet as a, you know, in a place where it can fully, you know, really do everything for us. There still needs to be a human layer on it. That's what we're seeing. I think that'll continually evolve though, obviously, but AI from a, at least from a content perspective has enormous potential and that's where we touch it. I'm curious what you see uh, in terms of AI. Do you, do you see any, any? Content is big. Uh, I see it big on a content. I mean, you could, you know, you could avoid all the mistakes, what you want, and you can have any flavor of the content you want. You know, I can simply say, listen, uh, you know, write me a, uh, product description uh, in a brand style, right? So, so right. If, if you're a popular person, it's going to give me your style, how you describe the product. So it has that kind of intelligence in it, right? Where I can say, you know, prime minister or president, hey, write me a um, little script in, in this person. And a lot of video scripting as well. I see a lot of, you know, you could simply say, listen, give me a video script for this this discussion, right? So they'll, they will right. flip up the video script. So I think there's a lot of, it's going to do a lot of good, but I think it's a human nature. Same thing happened when calculators came out, computers came out, people, you know, people got afraid that this is going to take a job away. You know, um, every time new technology comes, people get so afraid of that, right? So I think it's a human nature that people think, you know, but I think it's going to enhance people's life. It's going to make everybody's life easier. But also, you know, when when something does good, there's also, you know, potential for doing evil stuff as well, right? So, it's, you know, you just got to find a balance and be intelligent about it, how to use it. I'll tell you what, Kirby, I wish I had it in college. Now, what, <laughs> like my term <laughs> papers, but actually, you know, think about that for a moment. If, if you're a professor now, how do you think about grading? How do you know the, the paper wasn't written by AI, right? Think about that for a minute. So, you know, it changes the dynamics. I mean, you talk about evil, the implications that this might have. Are we, is, is chat GPT and AI and content creation and everything that you know, everybody else, Google, Microsoft's doing, is it, is it going to dumb down our our next generation of people because they're you know it's another path to shortcutting to a result you know i don't know it's 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 another, you know you talk about you know the same kind of conversation you get into with like genetics and dna sequence all this other stuff it's fascinating to think about and i don't you know i don't have the answers i don't know where we're going to end up but, but it's I, interesting I, to watch two couple of things i noticed uh, uh brian one was you know um, th- there's a lot of tools coming in the market right now to pick on if the content is chat GBT or not, if, if it was AI, right? So I see a couple of tools coming out. Um, sure. Schools are interested in those tools that if somebody writes with a, you know, uh, from AI, they can pick up on his, this is an AI written, not, not a human written. So that's part. But I think my, my general sense is, you know, I see great use of AI. Now some third world countries, you know, um, you know, we can call them third world or, or we can call the countries. I saw something um, the, in uh, India, especially, you know, 20 languages, 27 different states. Nobody understands the language where you can simply tell, you know, those people are not educated. They, they, they are definitely, you know, they don't know how to read English. So bill comes in English. The, the utility bill comes in English. Hey, once, once, one command, can you translate that into my ABC language? Yeah. And the bills got translated right away, right? So Incredible. any government services comes in an English language, they can translate it or vice versa as well. You know, government can do the same thing. Hey, this this uh, you know person wants this in this language. Can you translate that to? So that opens up a lot of opportunities. So those are good use of that. That where we're making people's Absolutely. life easier. We translating in the, the language, and and uh, instead of they learning a different language, we are helping them out. So I think those those are the good use going to be that that are making everybody's life easier. But where it's, I think where the dangerous is when we start taking advice from uh, AI. Hey, listen, you know, uh, what's my <laughs> medical advice? Is you know, what do you think of this stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if my wife would like that too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when you start taking the opinion or advice or, or or expertise from AI, I think that's where the danger is. But making people's life easier when, when you trans, you know, t- t- translate something or, or, you know, just help people out. I think that that's a good, great use of AI. Technology for good. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Uh, so yeah. One, wonderful. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of promise here and, and, and in the business context for making things much more efficient. Right. Uh, so, and particularly around content. So that's, it's exciting to see where that's going to go. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, talk about yourself, Brian. Um, you mentioned a little bit how you got into this. You know, uh, we already talked about your book. So how did you get into, you know, if you talk about a little bit of your background and, and uh, you know, also walk us through how, how people can get a help from you. Like where do you come in? And when somebody's starting this e-commerce on Amazon, where do you come in and how do you help them? Yeah, sure. 
Well, so I, you know, I've, I've been in e-commerce for a long time, 20, 20, 24 years. <laughs> it's crazy to think about. Uh, so since its early days and, you know, just watching the evolution over that time frame, it's been such an exciting field to be in because it changes. I mean, we're just talking about AI, right? Mm-hmm. About, you know, where we were even 15 or 10 years ago, uh, how far we've come. So, so, you know, number one, you know, my, my career is, you know, has been B2C and then more recently B2B and bringing that what's exciting about be the B2B side of digital transformation is the the, the extent to which you know you can drive return on investment across so many different places, it's about efficiency, about better serving the customers, about earning incremental revenue, earning more share of wallet from your existing customers. I mean, the ROI models, and there's one in my book, are mm-hmm. just incredible. Uh, several in my book that that, that that talk about where the benefit comes to a company. So I love the B2B side, and that's an area that you know often starts, as you mentioned, with, with an Amazon business program or Amazon program. And then moves into their uh, direct e-commerce. So we enable that first step. Uh, my firm mm-hmm. and Siba, we enable the the step, uh, the Amazon step, right? So number one, there's really two levels, two things that we do, and two steps the company should take. The first is understanding how you ought to be selling or how you ought to be positioned on Amazon. Sometimes it's you selling direct. Sometimes it's you selling through a, a trusted business partner, distributor, um, a dealer, et cetera, retailer, whatever. Um, so there's there's a whole sort of model around different go to market with Amazon, and what companies don't realize is it's not all mm-hmm. or nothing, right? You can take yeah. pieces, and so there's that piece, and the second piece that we do is we'll we'll help companies execute whatever that that strategy is, right? So we'll do the content, the advertising, brand management, fulfillment, inventory, projections uh, for that sort of thing. Uh, also, you know, channel management and conflict channel uh, and channel conflict mitigation. So sort of channel control and management is another big piece of what we do. Mm-hmm. So so we'll help a company get their product data right, you know, all those things, and then improve their visibility in the Amazon search engine. We talked about Amazon as a search engine. That's really important. There's 3 billion products on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> billion US. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. So anyway, so that's, you know, that's 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 what we do. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been fortunate to have success working with some many midsize and very large uh, companies and helping them do this B two B manufacturers principally, uh, and you know if you wanted to get a hold of us, I'm, I'm easy to reach. It's just Brian B R I A N at Enciba E N C E I B as in boy A E N C E I B as in boy A dot com, and you can also look me up on LinkedIn. I do a lot of publishing on LinkedIn and talking about these topics there as well. So that's what I do. And then one one other one other plug, if I could, uh, Gurmeet, I have go for it. Thought leadership series called Master B two B M A S T E R B two B dot com, and there we run events, virtual events, some physical events, and we talk about all these topics we're we're talking about today. You know, digital transformation, everything I cover in my book, sales team alignment, ROI, Amazon, uh, marketplaces, marketplaces for existing companies. You know, launching your own marketplace, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, and that's master B2B and, and practitioners can sign up to, uh, you know, listen in on our, our events, participate in our events uh, right on that website. Great. I'm going to include all your contact information below the video as well. So people can awesome. just uh, click a button. But, yes, thank, you know, I want to appreciate your time. You know, uh, thanks for spending time with me. I learn a lot from you and, uh, you know, I encourage all business leaders, uh, you know, um, uh, people who are thinking about it is still, you know, it's uh, Thinking about it, you know, to, to go to a market with, with Amazon or any digital channel or simply just they've gone and they made some mistake. They're trying to improve what, what they're working on to reach out to you for conversation, you know, um, get a copy of your book, reach out to you for conversation. I learn a ton and I'm sure everybody who's connects with you, they're going to learn a ton and use a help, you know, um, business as business owners. You know, we sometimes uh, we try to do a lot of things, but, you know, we cannot be good at everything. Right. So we have a lot of blind spot. So instead of you trying to figure things out reach out to somebody, you know, reach out to you and, and get a copy of your book and, and then avoid that. You know, the, I think one of the amazing stuff I see with the Amazon is a speed to delivery, right? So you can get up and running very quickly instead of you trying to figure things out. What are you going to do for framework? What are you going to do for this? They already done it, all that stuff for you. That's right. The time to market's really quick for Amazon, uh, for companies that, you know, want to move quickly. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. There's, yeah, it's a great way to start in your e-commerce journey. Good stuff. Thank you so much for time, Brian. Jermaine, thank you.